He wanted to be somebody and he wanted to show that there was more to him than what, what meets the eye and that he too could feel and soar like a god. And he was right, but he had to learn some very valuable lessons before he was able to actually unlock his potential. Not unlike me. Gentlemen, it is so nice to see you after watching this movie. I got to see it twice. Oh, actually. like a G. Yes. And what's funny is I didn't read much about it. I've been on maternity leave. So I was watching it and I thought, this is giving harder they fall. And then I started reading that you were the director, but I felt a little bit of that same uniqueness where I felt that we were being centered in stories that we've always been quite concerned with and quite affected by and often left out of, similar to the Western genre and now, you know, the stories about biblical times. Absolutely. So, so I wondered for both of you to be able to tackle, I think, that kind of idea and sentiment again together. Was there anything particularly different or that you maybe took from the last experience of doing that to help formulate the plan for this one? Well, you know, the, the ethos is the same, really. You know, create singular pieces of art that are true to your experience. I believe if you do that and if you stay true to who you are as a storyteller, you're always going to be um, walking in new territory. I would say that nothing could prepare you for, at least on my side, for making the Book of Clarence. The, you, the, the shooting of of The Heart of Day 4 was really hard in that we shot in the middle of COVID. Yeah. The first movie back, so people still didn't even know what COVID was. Mm -hmm. And just all of those restraints we had. But coming into, now we're going back 2,000 years with chariot races, gladiator fights, crucifixions. This is a whole other, nothing could prepare us. Um, but we, for me, I think we just had to remain true to who we are and, and the story that we're, that we're telling. I, I, I don't think there was anything I carried over from the heart of they fall into the book of Clarence. This was an entirely new experience. Even the place where we shot Matera, it's the fourth oldest inhabited city in the, in the world. Wow. Everything was, was brand, was brand new. Every day was just like, wow, man, we're actually making this movie and telling this telling this story. So yes. it was all new. Both of you have a knack, and you particularly, I think, for taking on roles and executing them in a way that is, you know, we're looking at a dramatic story and we're feeling a lot of empathy and a lot of feeling, and then we're also laughing. It's like, you know, they're like dramedies <laughs> in a way. And I wondered for you, um, you know, this character, I think, was so pained, you know, at the beginning of the story and had so much to prove to himself or to his mother or to his twin brother. What did you kind of tap into to pull off this one character who was essentially so hurt by this other character that you were also playing? I just got into the mindset of Clarence. That is what he was experiencing. And I know those feelings. Um, uh, they're not foreign to me. And I figured they wouldn't be foreign to the audience as well. And uh, I just wanted to pay homage to them in the moment. And uh, really just allow, it became at some point a lot of it just really allowing some of the feelings that I had lie, let lie dormant in my own self sort of come to the surface and uh, be realized through Clarence. I was grateful for that because in those moments it became cathartic. Um, but you know, yeah, it was just really situating myself in his shoes and his life and seeing the world through his perspective. He wanted to be somebody and he wanted to show that there was more to him than what, what meets the eye and that he too could feel and soar like a god. And he was right, but he had to learn some very valuable lessons before he was able to actually unlock his potential. Not unlike me.